in some ways there are some awkward incompatibilities between the decimal that we like to use and the binary which is so efficient and wonderful for computers to use. We've seen one example of this already, I think I mentioned in, the, in a previous video that 0.1 or 0.10, 10 cents in other words, in decimal, your current bank balance is not exactly representable as a binary number. You look at what it is in binary, 0 0.3 zeros, 1100, 0, 1100. It just isn't, you know, it keeps on recurring. Just as one third in decimal isn't exact, it goes 0.3333 forever. Decimal and binary sometimes don't mix. Now here's going to be a classic example. Let, let's just think this through without even writing anything down. If we've got a 4-bit nibble, we know that in hex it goes from four zeros to 1111, 15, represented as F. Can't use that full range. This is binary coded decimal, not binary coded hexadecimal, yeah? We have got to say that the moment that representation, even in one nibble, gets to 1010, that is 10, you can't leave it as 1010. You've now got to have two nibbles. The left nibble with a one in it and the right nibble wants to look like zero. You can't compress it into a single nibble, say one zero one zero, and I'm sorry folks, you'll all have to learn hex because otherwise you won't understand your bank balance. This is not going to go down very well. The challenge then is if you're using a four bit nibble but only for the decimal range, naught to nine, you've somehow got to make in all your bit twiddles You've got to make it carry into another nibble on the left at 10 and not at 16, which is what hexadecimal would do for you. So how does one sort of bridge that gap? Probably the best way for me to uh, get into the hard bit about this is go straight away for that magic number 10. Let's represent it in binary and then say, how do we convert it into BCD? and realize that we need that second nibble on the left. What I'd like to do here is to draw myself columns and I'm going to restrict myself to things that are at most two decimal digits. Let's remind ourselves up here that we're going to have a tens nibble and a units nibble and we'll initialize everything to zeros. But above here, just to keep things very simple, We'll use 4-bit binary representations and I hope you'll all agree that 1010 is 10 in base 10. And the reason for that is that the binary in 4 bits, that's an 8, that's a 2, so that's 10. This technique, which is called double dabble, I don't know how it was discovered, it's fiendishly clever. But the idea is we'd love to convert binary into BCD by as far as possible using simple bit shifts all the time and doing the minimum of mucking about to get it to carry early. So the double reflects the fact that we're going to shift this bit pattern across into here and we're going to regard it as one huge great big 12-bit register here, a walloping great shift register all joined together even though I've drawn it out separately. It's just going to move from right across to the left. I'm going to move them across. And remember, every time you shift the thing by one place left, you are basically doubling it. OK, that's where the double comes from. But we find we have to intervene to make it look right at the end. And that is where the dabble comes from. If you look up dabble, as I did in Chambers Dictionary, it's, one of the meanings is to make a trivial alteration to. OK, to make a small alteration to something, you're dabbling with it. OK, so that's where double dabble comes. OK, so it's basically doubling with a little bit of dabbling. And the truth really hits you at 10. So let's progressively shift this by one bit left. What's going to happen first of all? You shift over that one bit, you push it across into here because this is a unified register for the moment. Purists will say, ah, but when you shift left like that, you should fill in with zeros on the right. Yes, that is what will actually happen inside the hardware. But I prefer not to pad with zeros on the right as I shift because I want you to see when I finished. So we could call this uh, shift number one. Let's do another one. That one moves into that position, but you're bringing over 
another zero out of that part and that's leaving you with one zero in there. Now notice what's happened. On shift one here you had a one at the right in that nibble. By the time you've shifted it left one place it's in the twos position so you've doubled it. Let's do shift three and a zero is left. So that is shift three. Now this is where we can begin to see trouble on the horizon. We have got one more shift left to do and if you don't do anything about it it's just going to end up with one zero one zero in here. I mean all right what's happened here look is that was two you doubled it, but because you shifted a one in and not a zero, you've doubled it and added one. That now says five, okay? So basically it's doubling, but sometimes if the bit you shift over is a one and not a zero, it's double and add one. But essentially it's doubling. Now, the trouble is coming on the horizon, because I can see that if I just push that zero bit over here, I'm going to end up with one zero one zero, and now it is ten. Fine. But that's hexadecimal. It's not representable as a digit from 0 to 9. So, what should you do then? Let it happen anyway, and then look at it and say, oh my golly, it's gone to 10, it's gone to 11, it's gone to 15 even. I better backtrack and undo it and then redo it. No, dive in early and reason as follows. Concentrate everybody. Okay, what we want here is for this thing to come out looking like 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's say that's the desired result because that, regarding these as BCD digits, that's 1, 0, 10. That's exactly what you want. So how do we make that happen? How do we make it carry over into this left-hand nibble here when it doesn't want to at the moment. So the fiendish clever thing says, take a look at what you've currently got, because if what you've got is five or more, the act of doubling it is bound to get you into a number that needs to carry across. So if it is going to cause you trouble at five or more, we want it to carry at 10. It innately would like to carry at 16 and you don't want that. What's the difference, Sean, between 10 and 16? 6. 6. What's half of that? 3. All right, so if we add 3, the fact that we're then shifting it will double that 3 contribution to 6 and we'll make it carry. So the rule is, on double dabble, if what you see in your nibble is 5 or more, then add 3. So here we go, look. Next stage now, because we've seen trouble on the horizon, it's five, so add three. And three, we agree, is one, one. Now, here you do have to do a little addition with carries. You can't avoid it. Some carries will have to take place. One and one is zero, carry one. One and one is zero, carry one. One and one is zero, carry one. The act of adding three will make it look not like 0, 1, 0, 1, you've added the 3, it now looks like 1, 0, 0, 0. Magic. Look what happens when you shift the final 0 in. That one will shift left into the left-hand nibble. And you'll end up with 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this thing is now empty. So you know you've come to the end of your conversion. It's so cool. I love it dearly. You could argue, though, the one problem with all this is that in order to do your shifts quickly, you've got this in a sort of unified shift register full of bits. Your nibbles in the end end up looking correct, but you're going to have to dig them out of the shift register and say, oh yeah, it's clearly, that's a four, yeah, that's a two, isn't it magic? Of course, if you're using this seriously, you have to try and generate these BCD digits in a way where they don't necessarily need digging out of a bigger representation. But on the other hand, you're using that behind the scenes. I've uh, found for you the uh, ultimate reference that I've taken this example from and used the methodology. It's by a guy called Chuck Falconer. It's actually referred to in the Wikipedia articles on BCD and Double Dabble. So we've 
pull that over, it's freely available. You can go and dive in there to your heart's content because he covers about how to make them appear in a uh, much more usable way. And what he also says is that when you start looking at this, you realize you are actually doing the division by 10 and remainders thing that we discussed, but you're doing it in a pretty efficient way and only occasionally needing that little addition of three. So that's, I'm not saying there aren't other ways. There's seems to be endless variants on this. There's signed BCD, there's packed BCD, there's all sorts. But if you just want to understand the fundamentals, I would say go through the 42 example, then go to Chuck Falconer's memo and he does 255 as decimal. And boy, that needs spotting problems in about three sets of nibbles, not two. You have to spot one in the middle thing happening and so on. You've mentioned 255, so this goes up to hundreds, thousands. Yes, yes. You just add more... You add more BCD digits on the left to cope, but you give yourself a bigger problem when examining each of these digits to see if they're about to go beyond 10 when they're doubled by shifting left one more time. You give yourself a bigger and bigger inspection task, there's no question. So... Uh, like I say, the, the Chuck Falconer memo from which this is derived will put a link out to it. It is freely available. He doesn't explain how the people who invented this actually discovered it and worked out that it really does work. It seems almost like magic when you do it. And every, every so often I pull out another number and I think, I bet it won't work for this, but it does. It's quite incredible. So there we are then. I think we've fairly well summarise now what the situation is, that for great big engineering, scientific calculations, even for finding new prime numbers as huge integers, you really do need a proper binary to speed things up. But for some sorts of trivial calculations, you might even want to do it in BCD all the time. But even if you are basically binary and want to print out your answers, you still have to convert from binary through to BCD, and that is always a, a worry for the people who write the I.O. routines, shall we say, for C and so on, is, is this going to be efficient? What we're saying is, uh, at the computing end of things, you should be able to prepare that BCD digit stream as quickly as possible. To finish off with then, life, the universe and everything. Would this work for converting 42? Yes, it will. Now, admittedly, <laughs> here's one I did earlier. <laughs>